Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about using I2PD, the C++ implementation, which has a lighter footprint. Now, in my own usage, I like to use the Java locally, so I have a shortcut to both, and I'm going to show you how you can set up this remote I2PD browser today. And so what I have here is the I2P desktop, the repository on the Gidea Onion here. I also include the I2PD remote shortcut so you can have both of these on your desktop in order to use whichever one you feel like using at any given moment. And so what I recommend is if you have a single board computer install the I2PD on that. Now why didn't I use the Java on the single board computer? Because the Java uses more resources and I still mainly use the Java or the I2P Plus version of I2P Router. And that would be this shortcut here. Now, for this one, I have I2PD remotely. As you can see, it's right here, and I can utilize it in the same exact profile as all is set up. So if you install the I2PD from the Gidea Onion, you'll have the shortcut for both the local Java or the local I2PD if you prefer I2PD, whichever you prefer, and you can have whichever one you want to use at any given moment. I'm going to cover that right now so you can set this up on your own system. And so I have an I2P browser set up right here, and having the I2PD set up on my remote server, which is a single board computer on my local area network. And I'm going to show you how this works. So what it does is it uses SSH for using the remote I2PD server. Now how you'll set this up is first you can check out my key authentication post on the public blog at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech slash posts and I'll leave a link to that in the description. And so all you need to do to set up the key authentication because it utilizes SSH forwarding for this is you'll run this command here. You'll first install I2PD on your single board computer or other remote server. Then you'll use SSH-copy-ID and then the login for your server and as you can see, there's a demonstration screenshot right here so you can see how it should look. And once you've set up that remote key authentication, you can do that without even needing a password, which is what I recommend for this since it's going to be using the SSH key authentication to automate the process. So what you'll need to do is first install that I2PD on the remote server that you want it used on on your local area network, say a single board computer for example. And once you've done that, run this set up the key authentication for your local machine, the desktop or otherwise that you want to use the browser on. So once you've set those things up, which is pretty easy. There's Debian packages on the I2PD repository where you can install it pretty easily with the dpkg command on Debian-based systems. And you can also find it on Arch-based systems in the AUR and otherwise, but it's always a good idea, if possible, to compile it yourself for I2P. So once we've done those two things, We'll go on the Gitia Onion, grab I2P Desktop, and how you'll do that is you'll go to this little copy URL thing here, and then once you do that, you can install Tor for the ability to Torify the git command for git clone, or you can simply go into the site here, and you can go right here and download it manually. So it's up to you how you want to download the I2P Desktop, or you can simply check out the simple shortcut and then you can view it raw on the site and then you can copy and paste it here if you want to do that that's another simple way to do it and once you do that you want to save that shortcut file on your desktop and so what you'll do is you'll open your desktop directory that should be in your user slash home slash user directory and then you'll paste the I2PD remote shortcut right there. 
and ensure that your icon location is correct. As you can see here, it shows the icon location. You may need to edit that if you have a different username or login. And once you've placed that on your desktop, you'll be able to utilize this. And let's take a closer look at what actually performs this. So it'll actually be an option inside the Start I2P. So the Start I2P is a script that allows you to automate starting the commands for yourself and opening that browser as well. So as you can see right here, SSH FW, SSH forward stands for, you have the command here for SSH to forward these ports to the remote server. So this here would be the login and IP address of your I2PD server. And so you're going to replace that, but ensure you've done the key authentication setup, which is very simple to do. As mentioned, it's right on that public blog post. You can check this out or you can simply copy it or manually type it out for yourself. So set up that key authentication on the I2PD server, set up I2PD on that server, move the shortcut to your desktop, and once you click on it, you'll have a remote connection to your I2PD and you'll be able to use I2P browser remotely. And so it's nice to have these options. Something I always talk about with privacy and anonymity, diversity is really a huge benefit to us. So even if you say have questions about an application, if you use multiple different applications, different types of servers, different types of networks, you're spreading any potential risk across those different platforms and applications. And so if there were ever a problem with one, at least you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. So I hope you enjoyed this short little video today. I'm going to be doing another bigger tutorial coming up, but I did want to share this with everyone. In case they weren't sure, I had someone ask what this SSH command was for. Well, that's what it's for. So today's video goes through how to set up the remote I2PD browser using the start I2P script and the I2PD remote desktop shortcut, all provided in the I2P desktop setup that I created to try and help users get started with I2P. So only if your shortcut has remote as an option. So it'll be the execution of this will be something like this, start I2P remote, and that's gonna utilize the SSH command, which you have edited as I just went over. And so that will use it remotely, and you'll be able to have both on your desktop. So that's what I have today, guys. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back later with more on how to protect your privacy.